welcome along guys cheers for tuning in so in a previous video i mentioned that i was going to give you guys some tips on ways to be a little bit quicker um on i racing now the reason this came about and i'll go through this um again i mentioned it in the previous video like i said but i'll go through it again um me and my mate ben have been sim racing for around the same sort of time as long as i can remember we both started on console back in the day um but i've always been a little bit further ahead of him in terms of hardware and upgrade path um so it's got to the stage now where we're both about the same in terms of hardware ben's just got himself um a direct drive motor now there'll be a bit of a bedding in period where you get used to the new equipment and whatever but i remain a little bit quicker than him and i think i know why ben's not having none of it by the way he doesn't uh he doesn't agree with me he doesn't believe um what i'm about to tell you guys but i'm going to present the evidence to you and it's up to you and ben if you're watching you won't be um why i think it is and i think it's pretty nailed on i think it's clear cut from what you're about to see um but the whole point of this is to hopefully make you guys a little bit quicker and i've actually the comparison i'm about to show you between ben and myself i've actually done with another guy in a previous um race as well comparing my driving to his and he was an 8k guy um and it is, I mean, it's very obvious, but people may not realise just how much time they're leaving on the track. So, without further ado, we'll get straight into it. So, if you like the video, do us a huge favour, hit that like button, you'll be doing me a massive favour. And if you're not yet subscribing to the channel, and obviously you like this sort of content, then please consider subscribing. Right, let's go. Right, so... What you're going to see on this screen is going to be a comparison of one of my laps compared to one of Ben's laps. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, we've got very similar hardware at this stage. So we've got a very similarly specced PC. We've both got load cell pedals. We've both got a PSR1 aluminium profile rig. We've both got a direct drive motor. But there's one thing that's different. There's one thing that I have on this rig that Ben doesn't have on his and I'm going to leave that with you. See if you can work it out based on the lap. Now, it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to show you an onboard of me. I'm going to show you an onboard of Ben. I'm going to show you um, an alternative camera from a chopper um, from both Ben and myself. And we're going to break it down corner by corner. And I'm going to let you in. On a little secret as to why in this instance he's losing about four tenths a lap to me now um what i've taken this is from the same race so the conditions are the same um i've taken the fastest lap from both myself um and from ben now a little disclaimer i'll put it out there straight away i am not the quickest driver at all i just happen to be a little bit quicker than my mate at this stage um i certainly don't drive this car much you'll know from my channel i don't drive the gt4s much uh, ben actually has a little bit more experience in these cars than me normally the gap between myself uh, and ben is around a second a lap when we discuss practice and we discuss lap times and stuff like that ben's pretty pleased if he's somewhere around a second slower than me in the same way that I'm pretty pleased if I'm a second slower than the alien guys. You'll see in my uh, Clio Cup tutorial uh, track guides that I always mention if I'm within a second of the VRS guys, I'm pretty pleased. So yeah, just wanted to explain all of that and how this is going to work. So we're going to go on board, first of all, with Ben.
Right, so there's Ben's lap. Very respectable, 143.7. Um, pretty clean lap. A little bit of draft from the car ahead, possibly. Um, anything jumping out at you at this stage as to why he may be losing a little bit of time? Hold that thought. We'll go on board with me. Right, so a 143.304, so yeah, three and a half, four tenths quicker per lap. Um, yeah, it's not much, but over race distance, um, it does it does make a difference. And you can see from the early stages in the race, I'm, I'm consistently um, quicker lap by lap and I'm able to pull a gap. Um so yeah now we're going to go on board the chopper and we're going to have a look at each lap from above
Right, so at this stage, I would imagine a lot of you have realised the difference in the laps. So before we take this one step further and break it down corner by corner, um, I will explain that it is track position. Okay, where you are putting your car on the track for each corner. You can tell by the onboards um, and the chopper cam from Ben's faster slap. He's not missing any apexes. He's not outbreaking himself. He's not overcorrecting anywhere. He's not made any real mistakes. The only difference from his lap to my lap, really, the gearing's all the same as well. He maybe gets the gears in different stages of the braking zone. Uh, the hairpin, for example, is very late to engage second gear, um, which may affect his drive out, possibly. Um, I'm, I think I'm on the gas a little bit earlier coming out with that. Um, but most of the lap is pretty, is pretty clean. It's pretty tidy. But... Um, yeah, it's always been glaringly obvious to me when I'm behind him or when I watch his, his laps. It is his position of the car. And we'll go through now just how much that gives you. Also, at this stage, I will mention that the position of my car is by no means perfect. When I compare my laps to some of the really quick guys, um, I'm leaving so much time on the, on the track as well. Um, it's crazy the difference between us regular guys and the aliens is they're able to put their car in the perfect position consistently every time without error the the margin for error where they are on track is so slim and that's why they're able to get crazy lap times a lot of the time um very high risk but yeah, that, that's the difference. They're able to do it consistently. Um, so yeah, right, let's break this down. We're going to go corner by corner and I'll show you just how much time there is out there. Right, so the first one we're going to discuss then is going into turn one. Now, I took the screenshot at the point where we both applied the brakes. Um, but braking isn't really what I'm going to be looking at here. Um they are very similar braking points for, for all the corners. But as you can see, the track position of the car is very different. Now, it's only possibly a tyre's width further over to the right, but I'm extending the track as much as I possibly can before I turn in. That obviously gives me um, a higher corner in speed. I'm able to take this corner slightly quicker than Ben would be able to because he's on a slightly tighter line and it would be marginable but like I say when it's every corner over race distance this soon adds up right into the first turn then just going off the screenshot you can clearly see the different lines that we're on here. Ben is just about touching the inside with his front left and then obviously his rear left will follow whereas Mark High is positioned way more aggressively over the kerb. Half a car's width to the left. Obviously much different line, a much faster line based on the um, the trajectory and my line in. It is a much quicker line. So again, you can just see there just from one corner potentially how much he can gain by positioning his car differently and these sorts of things you'll you'll work out with practice where you can go over the curbs a little more without getting the off track right then so turn three i believe coming up now this one's actually not that different you can see that i am slightly further over but it is only slightly but the main difference on this one comes at the actual corner itself, and it's yeah, it's quite uh, it's quite different. This one you have to consider any chicane. Um, you have to sort of consider as a sequence of corners rather than 
turn one, turn two, turn three, or turn one, turn two, and the exit. So yeah, we'll have a look at the uh, the sequence as we go. Right. So again, then as we go over the curb, way too cautious on his turning, not aggressive enough, not over the curb enough, which obviously means his next turn is going to be tighter. So yeah, you really need to get over the top of this curb and again it's just about positioning your car in the right place now this next one on first impressions looks the same the the line that we're on looks the same the the position of ben's car on this curb in my opinion is absolutely fine it's the same as mine but in order for him to get his car in that position based on his previous corner he would have had to scrub off so much more speed than me to be in that position that this is the main cause of the problem in terms of keeping your momentum up, keeping your speed up, positioning your car at the right part of the track at the right moment. And at this moment, he has positioned his car at the right part of the track, but his speed is massively compromised. So this is why when sometimes when you can compare your lap to somebody else and you look at it and you break it down you think i'm in the same place why is he why is he so much quicker you've got to consider the bigger picture if you like what's what's gone before what's coming next what's his momentum like where did he break where's he on the throttle what speed is he carrying through that corner so yeah first impressions this looks like we're in the same place we are in the same place but the speed will be will be much different unfortunately i don't have a comparison of the speed because when you go on board on a replay uh, for somebody else it doesn't actually show you the speed which is a shame um, because i think there will be a big difference in this one yeah and then obviously the exit of what is a very important sequence uh, of corners you can see that ben is just about over the red and white curb whereas i'm almost in the wall so my left tires are just on that white line whereas his left tires are way way to the left of that um of that white line so yeah when we talk about momentum the speed i've carried through from positioning my car over that first curb enabling me to straighten my car up quicker turn in for the second curb be back on the throttle quicker and run it out straighter and extend all of the track keeping my momentum going is huge that sequence of corners there is probably the majority of um of lap time that i get over ben in this particular instance right so yeah track position on this one uh, much different so it's difficult to get back over to the right hand side for this sequence of of corners coming up so you kind of have to feather the throttle going around the right hander and compromise a little bit of speed in order to be in the right track position at this stage now you can see ben's probably carried more speed through the right hander to get to this point but when he gets to this point he's in trouble because he's in the wrong place on the track um, by a good half a car's width i would say again my position's not perfect here i could i could do with being a little bit further over to the right as well but as we've just talked about sequences of corners we've got another sequence coming up another left right chicane a little bit longer this one but this one actually leads on to quite a big straight so again the the setting up of this sequence is really important and again because of the track position ben's found himself in he's going to be in a world of pain when we get to the next corner which we'll look at now right so this one again um we're in completely different parts of the track really ben's just about on the red and white curb there uh, whereas i'm all the way over taking full advantage of the curb um, half a car's width to the left i would say this is going to give me uh, more of an opportunity to get the car straightened up 
back on the throttle and minimise the second part of the corner uh, to carry as much speed as I can up, through and all the way down that straight. So, yeah, again, it's just setting it up from from the from the beginning, from the, the braking zone, the positioning of the car. Um, because I was slightly further over, I could probably get the car controlled and settled and turned in earlier, which means I can take more curb, which means I can get back on the throttle and yeah, ease that second corner out a little bit better, carry all that momentum all the way through, whereas Ben's line coming out of this second part is going to be much tighter now again we're going to look at the the exit curb like we did on the previous sequence and i think if memory serves it is again very similar yeah so if we look at the the final curb in this sequence then you can see they are actually very similar ben's just about touching the white curb there the white line sorry before the curb whereas mark has on top of the white line um, in the screenshot, Mark has actually probably half a car's length further forward, so Ben potentially put his car in the same place as me here, but at very different speeds. Um, that's the thing to take away from this. So the problem here is that because Ben has probably carried more speed around the right-hander before the sequence, it's cost him um, in terms of speed coming out. So most people would consider that corner flat, and if you can take a corner flat, why wouldn't you? Well, again, you've got to think of the bigger picture. You can take that corner flat, but your car's going to be positioned in the wrong place going into the braking zone. Probably in the wrong place going into the first part. And then possibly in the correct place at the final part of the sequence, but at much lower speeds. And again, if you're going to take all that speed all the way down that straight, it will cost you by the time you get to the next braking zone. So, yeah, this next one is just to show, you know, just how similar it is for the rest of the lap, really. We've got um, the braking zone going into the next chicane, and we've also got the exit coming out of the chicane. And the car is very similarly positioned um, on both the approach in the braking zone and the exit. Um, so, yeah, just to highlight that it was really just them them sequences of corners that has cost Ben his lap time on this one and um, it was a similar story for the hairpin and it was a similar story for the final chicane as well so yeah it really was just uh, about nailing the track positions mm -hmm. of the all important corners right then there you go so we've broke it down we've gone on board we've been uh, in the car we've been above the car we've broke it down corner by corner and i think it's pretty clear where he's losing time the question is why he's losing time now this is the big reveal if you like um, now i've spoke to ben about this and like i've said he doesn't agree with me he doesn't think this is the reason but I genuinely do think this is why. I mentioned previously that the hardware that we have is all very similar. But there's one thing that I have that Ben doesn't. Anyone get it? I'm curious to know if anybody thought. I wonder if it's that. And it's triple screens. So Ben races on a single monitor. It's not an ultra wide, it's just a, a single PC monitor. And because of that, I don't think he knows where his car is. I don't think he thinks his car's in the wrong position. It's very difficult, as you will have found out when you watched the onboard cockpit replay, which is why I showed you that one before the chopper one. It's very difficult to know where your car is on track. I've got so many more reference points when I can look out the the windows of the car, um, it's much easier to position your car when you know where your car is. Now, you, there's, there's things you can do with a single screen. I'm not suggesting he needs to go out there and buy triple screens. That is what I would do. Um, but it's not essential if you're racing on a single screen. 
you can still position your car correctly you just need to know how to do it so i actually seen my old pal dave cam do a tutor uh, a tutorial on this and he was actually showing you how to line up parts of the dash of the car with parts of the circuit and that's how i would recommend uh, somebody who was racing on a, a single screen would approach it until of course you go by triples um so yeah that is basically my opinion on why my mate is a little bit slower than me around a racetrack so let me know what you think let me know in the comments um does it make sense am i talking shit wouldn't be the first time um tell ben he's wrong if he is i think you're wrong i think this is where you're going wrong um so yeah let me know in the comments let him know in the comments what you think um and hopefully i've also helped some of you guys out that was the main reason for this video it's not just about um taking my mate's lap and criticizing it um it was genuinely to try and help him help you guys get a little bit quicker um yeah that's the goal that's always been the goal of my channel to help you guys go a little bit quicker and if i can uh, learn some stuff along the way as well then yeah i'm ticking all the boxes so yeah hopefully you've got some value from this video guys do us a huge favor if you have hit that like button before you go you'll be doing me a massive favor and if you're not yet subscribing to the channel and obviously you like this sort of content then please consider clicking that button down there cheers guys see you on the next one